Hi guys, Tracy here with another layout using the Counting Stars kit and add-on from the Scraptastic Kit Club. And I'm today going to scrapbook these four photos which I printed up using a diptych app, app on my uh, iPhone. And I just use the app, it's called Diptych, D-I-P-T-I-C. And it just allows you to, there's a bunch of apps that do this, but this is the one that I've always used since way back when I first got a phone. And so I've just continued to use it um, because I know how to use it quite well. So it just allows you to print up a series of photos in a couple of different types of grids and with different shapes and colors for the borders and that sort of thing. I almost always just use a two by two grid with white square borders. You can round the corners and do all sorts of things with it. You just saw me there um, looking through the kit and there was a white piece of cardstock. And so because I printed this straight from my phone, I wasn't able to control the print size of it. And so it printed right over to the border and I wanted to have a white border around it, like a white edge around it. So I, uh, because I wasn't able to print with borders from my phone, it just doesn't have that option with the software that I use. Uh, I just matted it with the piece of white cardstock that came in the kit. And now I'm just looking at a whole bunch of different, these are a lot of scraps of pattern paper from the kit, as well as some full size pieces. And so I'm just kind of trying to figure out how I might want to layer some of these patterns together. And the pattern, the, the great thing about uh, scrapbooking with a kit is that there are so many different pattern papers and they all coordinate with each other without looking quite so matchy matchy as it does when you work from a single manufacturer's line. So I really like that about using a kit. So I know that all of these pattern papers are going to look relatively good together. I don't have to think about my own skill for putting together papers. Um, it'll all just look good but it won't have that same as I said kind of too coordinated look that you sometimes get or I find that I sometimes get when I work all one with all one manufacturer's line because that is another way to kind of take the guesswork out of coordinating pattern papers is to just use everything from the same line which works as well. So I'm going to use this Scraptastic pink paper for the background and it's kind of pink with white hash marks all over it. It looks a little bit like a screen or like a, like a, I don't know, it's kind of got a textured pattern to it. And as I go along, I'm just writing down my supplies on my ingredients form. And I'll put a link to this. This I keep a, a copy of this on my blog because I get questions about it. And so, yeah, I'm just a little just pointing out here that this, that this Chamel pen that I have from American Crafts is running out. I've only used it maybe twice and it's running out. So I just switched to my good old faithful Stettler pen, which I absolutely love Stettler pens. I have them for years and years and years and they never run out. So uh, no need to really buy anything else for me anyways. I love my Stettler pens. So uh, yes, I keep those forms on my blog. And so I'll just put a link to that in the information section for this video. So I have cut this gray paper, uh, which is by Amy Tangerine from the Stitch Collection. I've cut it into a strip and now I'm just, I fold it and put a little slit in the center mark just to uh, be able to cut banner, like make a fishtail banner type of thing on the end of it. And that just adds a little bit of interest. It's just a little bit more interesting than just having the rectangular edges showing on the end of it. Now I'm using my Ranger distress tool. I think it, it's a Tim Holtz distress tool. And I just went around the edges of that green paper, which is from Scraptastic. It's really cool. It has all these handwritten words all over it with the little centers of the letters are filled in with colors randomly. And I really like that look. And so I'm just taking a bunch of strips of paper that you saw me cut earlier in this process. I kind of cut them down to size so that they're all just a little bit, each one is a little bit bigger than the other so that I can see the edges of a variety of different patterns popping through. I thought about adding this, this transparency into the layers, but I've decided not to. And I really want to use this yellow pattern paper because it's one of my favorite pattern papers that came in the kit. And so I just cut another triangle. I had used that paper for a triangle in my previous layout. So I just went ahead with the same idea and cut the other side of the triangle for that. So of all those papers, they all came in the kit uh, and they're all mostly leftovers from other 
from other kit from other layouts that I've already done and so I'm just look having a look at this sticker sheet and thinking about potentially using some of these stickers in my layers but I'm not quite ready to do it yet I just want to kind of keep in mind what is available to use on this layout so I'm just trying out a few things but I'm not sticking anything down at this point I'm just kind of trying to keep them in mind and then these uh, black rub-ons aren't going to make it onto the layout today so I'm going to go ahead and do my my outlining and uh, and I'm going to use my gray Chamel pen which I've used more than twice and it hasn't run out so that is a good thing because I love it. I have another gray pen but the other gray pen that I have is too light and so it doesn't provide the same contrast as this. I love this pen. It's the perfect shade of gray. It's just it's dark enough that you can really see the lines as you can see as you watch me do this uh, but it's it's just a less than black so it just gives a little bit more of a subtle outline line and I love 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 this pen I hope it doesn't run out because I really love it uh, I'm going to outline this uh, paper even though it I did already texturize it with the uh, distress tool I really like the look of textured and outlined and I'm just going to outline every single one of the pattern papers that I cut so this one is a scraptastic paper uh, this one is an Amy Tangerine paper from the stitched collection that green one with the words all over it as I mentioned is Scraptastic and that striped one is Scraptastic and this one is Studio Tecturec and this one is Scraptastic as well. I think that's the last one. So I think I'm going to stay zoomed in while I show you guys how I uh, how I combine all of these papers and first I'm just going to outline my background paper which is a Scraptastic paper. And I do my outlining just on a piece of grid paper from Stampin' Up! just so that any stray marks don't go on my gray mat, which I love and don't want to get messed up. So here's all my already cut, already outlined papers. And they're ready to put together. And as I put them together, I'm just being mindful of staggering them so that nothing lines up too much. I, I'm kind of... I, I often will put more layers on the bottom than on the top, but in this case, I'm putting more layers on the top than on the bottom. This is, it's kind of look like, like it's going to look a little bit like the photo is hanging off of a signpost. If you were to think about this in terms of what the sketch would look like that this is based on. So there's all kinds of horizontal layers at the very top of this photo. And then the photo is going to dangle down from it. As opposed to a lot of times what I do is I'll put all my layers on the bottom and then it looks like my photo is sitting on a ledge. So this is a little bit of a different look than what I usually go for. But I was thinking that at this point I was thinking that my title would probably be on the bottom and so I wanted to have a bit of balance but I'm going to change that. So as I layer them together, I did just slow down this process a little bit. So this video will be uh, slightly longer because of that. But as I layer them, I'm just kind of staggering where they end up so that I can see the right amount of them. And whenever I use layers I with patterns, I always like to put a layer of dark pattern paper in there. And that's what that gray paper is, which I'm actually going to shift out so that you can see a little bit more of it. I don't want it to line up with that striped paper. See how I just wanted a tiny little edge of the gray to be showing um, under that. Yeah, there you go. That's a little bit better. So see how you can see a little bit more of it on the left side of that striped, that diagonal striped paper. I wanted to be able to see plenty of the gray because I like to put a dark paper amongst my pattern papers because it... Um, it just helps anchor everything and it helps you to not get so overwhelmed by all of the variations of patterns. And then I just put that yellow triangle in the very, very back. And I'm actually, I'm pretty sure I'm going to shift that around. What I'm doing right now is I'm going to get some more pop dots because I don't have enough there. It looks like I have a ton, but they're all almost empty sheets. So I just got, I got these from a local scrapbooking store and it's a new brand for me. So I thought I would try these. It's actually, I used these when I was at my friend Tanya's house one time and I really like how easy they are to peel. They've got a lot more waste 
well, not really waste, but it they don't have the in-between pieces that you have to deal with. So they're easy to kind of just pick them up off of the um, off of the backing, as opposed to my Stampin' Up! ones, which I usually use. They're all kind of interlocked with each other. And so, it, you know, it's not that hard to get them off or anything. But uh, I thought I'd try these for a change. So now what I'm doing is uh, one one thing when you when you layer, everything kind of starts to look a little bit flat. So you want to give some dimension, or I want to give some dimension anyways. So what I do is I start by pulling up the edges of a few of my papers. I don't want to pull them all up or else it loses its effect because if they're all pulled up, then you don't notice the ones that are pulled up anymore. So I'm alternating between pulling, like rounding up some of the edges to make it look kind of tattered and and uh, wrinkled like kind of um, warped I guess looking and then I'm using pop dots to put a little bit of lift on the flat layers and so here again this is another layer that I'm going to just kind of pull up and make it look a little bit more warped that uh, striped paper and I'm going to add a little bit of lift as well and these pop dots I'm actually not taking the backing off of them so they're not I'm not using them as adhesive I'm just using them for the lift and the reason I'm doing that see I'm just moving that yellow paper out a little bit because there wasn't enough of it showing so that's a little bit better the, so I'm using those pop dots just for lift I'm not a I'm not pulling off the backing and using them as adhesive and the reason for that is that I might want to add some more things amongst my layers like uh, I might want to put some embellishments or stick some extra layers in there and once they're stuck down you have less options it's just a little bit messier and, and difficult you could always pull them back up again but I like to just leave them because I don't really need them for stick because I've already stuck it all down with the uh, ATG adhesive so I am going to use my grid paper here to make sure that I line this up properly. I want it centered and I also want it relatively straight. It doesn't have to be perfect, but um, I'm just using my grid to help me get it as perfect as is reasonable. And again, I only tore, I only took off the backing on two of those pop dots because that it just leaves me more options. And again, I don't really need it. See how I'm using my grid mat to line up where that's going to go on the background paper. And I don't really need it for adhesive. I just need it for lift. So I didn't tear off the backings of all of the pop dots. So now these gold chevron pieces are really, really cute. And I thought it might look nice for them to be kind of pointing down at my title. So I put three of them there and I really like that look but they're only stuck on by a tiny little bit and they're not very sticky stickers. So I am going to use some pop dots which I have to, to cut in half because they're just a little bit too big. Even the small ones are a little bit too big. So now that those stickers have a bit of support underneath of them, they're going to stay a little bit because the other, I was afraid that if they got, if they bent down, that they would come unattached from the paper. So at this point, I, I'm spelling out the word routine. And my first idea for the title for this, I, what I wrote down on my paper was espresso slash coffee ritual. So I was going to call this coffee ritual or espresso ritual or something like that um, which is not all that interesting of a title and then I actually without thinking called it routine instead of ritual and then I realized wow caffeine rhymes with routine so that makes a much punchier title so I decided to call it caffeine routine so, you know, I get a lot of people ask me how I come up with my titles. I'm, I don't really consider myself as being very good at coming up with titles. They really just sometimes they just happen without too much thought, like this one, which was sort of like an accident that ended up being better than what my original one was going to be to begin with. I had this thing happen as I was spelling out the word caffeine, um, where the more I looked at the word caffeine, the more I thought it was spelled wrong. And that happens sometimes. <laughs> um, you know, things just start to look weird the more you stare at them. And so I did have to use my phone just to make sure and check the spelling <laughs> of the word caffeine. But I did get it right, so... 
And these days of spell check, um, I don't know about you guys, but I find my spelling skills are declining quite rapidly because I don't have to think anymore about how words are spelled. So... So there's my title, and uh, as I mentioned in another recent layout, uh, I put the bolder font on the bottom and the more thin font on the top. That's again just to kind of make it more balanced with the weight so that the lighter, uh, the lighter feeling font is on the top and the heavier font is on the bottom. It kind of provides some balance. Again, I'm just kind of adding the names of the things as I go, so I ought to probably tell you what they are. So the um, the thicker, the bolder thicker is called gilded, and the lighter thicker is called hardcover. And I just use the asterisks from the bolder thickers f to put on either side of the word caffeine. And so I'm just starting from the middle of the word just so that, because I want it to be sort of even or lined up on either side. Although I ended up adding a sticker on the right side of this word, so it could have been over to the left a little bit more to make a little bit more room for my sticker. That was a last minute um, addition, so at this point I didn't know I would be putting a sticker beside it, so I just centered it. Oops, those thickers really do not want to stay put. So even though it's not number wise it's not the middle letter that f is uh design wise the middle letter so i started with that meaning meaning it's in the middle lengthwise of the word even though if you count over i think the e is the is the middle letter so there we go and then just put those two little asterisks i really like that it just adds a little bit of emphasis to the word caffeine and makes it look a little bit less like it's going to float away there i am checking the word i had to ask siri how do you spell caffeine which i think is hilarious because it writes how do you spell caffeine and then she actually answers you spell it this way <laughs> oh i'm easily amused by these sorts of things so I can't remember, yes, so everything is all adhered down now. I did adhere all of my layers onto my background paper. So now all I have to do is think about how I'm going to be embellishing this layout. And my general rule of thumb for embellishing really layered layouts is less is more because the layers add a lot. And so if you add a lot of layers and you add a lot of embellishments, although I have been known to do that in the past, um, and I probably will do it again in the future. Um, if you add a lot of layers and a lot of embellishments, it can be just a lot. And so I didn't want this one to be a lot. A lot is fine. There's nothing wrong with that if you like that look. Um, but for this one, I, I just wanted to go easy on the, on the embellishments. So I already had those gold stickers on there and I decided to put that really cute uh, star clip paper clip from the kit. I believe those are from freckled fawn, but I could be wrong So I just took my little dish of embellishments. Oh And I really love that leaf there. I really love it I wasn't going to use that leaf there because it doesn't seem like a leaf would be all that um, Logical of an embellishment. I really like that there too, but it I didn't want to move my title and I, that's too repetitive with the uh, Banner behind it. So I'm not going to use that particular embellishment on this one, but I really like the leaf the, or vine or whatever that thing is over on the left hand side and then I put that star over there and those are Amy Tangerine uh, transparent pieces that came in the kit and so I really like how that looks so I'm just going to use my ATG just to get a little bit of glue over on those on the leftmost most points of that star and I just had to use my finger to rub the adhesive so that it wouldn't be showing and then I'm going to put one of the gold banners from the kit which I had to cut down quite a bit in order to fit it in amongst the layers and now I'm just going to do the same with this I'm only sticking this in one tiny little part and then uh, the rest of it will just float there So there's that that host sticker, which is going to take a while before I get it in the place that I want. I'm being a little bit more fussy here than I probably need to be, <laughs> readjusting it several times. Um, but yeah, I like that sticker there. Again, it adds just one more item to provide some weight for that bottom part of the of the 
of the title. And then I just put the uh, a couple of enamel dots around. They're all white that I'm going to be putting. And um, just for a little bit of visual interest. I thought about getting rid of that one, but I would tear the photo. So I decided to just leave it. I don't really need it. I don't really like it there, but I'll just leave it. It'll look better than a ripped photo, that's for sure. So yeah, now I'm going to look at my roller date stamp. So sorry, that's really fast and <laughs> probably makes you a little dizzy. I'm going to use my Amy Tangerine Enjoy Today one. And I just wanted to show you that. Um, I've been keeping my roller date stamps out like that and it just it's on my desk so I can remember to use them. I found I was always using the same one or two roller date stamps over and over again. Oh yeah and I left that in too because somebody asked me how I get my roller date stamps to kind of go where I want them to go. That's what I do. I get my head right down. I have to put my ear right on the desk and watch exactly where that stamp is going to land and always make sure that you check at that it's not upside down because it's easy to kind of find your date find your phrase ink it up and then in the process of that it gets flipped upside down and then you end up stamping it upside down I've done that many times so I just try to get into the habit of always checking that roller date stamp first and I get my head right down there in order to see exactly where it's going to land so now I'm just adding some mist in the top left hand and bottom right hand corner so it looks like a diagonal line across my layout and I used Mr. Huey's in white and in silver So here is a little bit of a close up video look at this layout. There will be some photos along to follow. So here you get to see all of those layers together. I used a total of eight pattern papers all layered together on this layout, which I think is awesome. I was kind of trying to go for 10 in the back of my head, um, but I didn't want to just put two more just for the sake of putting two more. So I just kept it to eight. So, um, yeah, this one was really, really fun. I love layering. It's just such a fun way to use up a bunch of pattern papers. It's especially fun to use as one of the last layouts that you make with a lay with a kit because there's lots of little scraps of tons of pretty papers left that you just want to one more chance to get in your scrapbook. So uh, it's a great time to use a really heavily layered layout or to create a heavily layered layout. So thanks so much for watching everybody. I hope you have a really great scrappy week.